they were my best friends <laughs> growing up. The black can. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to leave the hotel. I was scared too. Meanwhile, you can it smell like straight horse booty, bro. That was Welcome to Tabletop Topics. I'm your host, Jeff. And of course, Jeff. Guys, if you want to catch our episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. And if you want to catch our ugly mugs on Wednesdays and Fridays, we are on YouTube, One Word, Tabletop Topics. We also have our Triple T's Clip channel and our TikTok channel. So if you see something that you like, click on the link and it'll take you to the full podcast. Also, we have timestamps. We finally have timestamps. <laughs> Yay! Um, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, and ring the notification bell. And if you guys have any suggestions on anything that we you would like to hear us talk about, let us know. But hey. Jeff, yes, sir. We have a new special guest. Special guest. Oh, man. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. I'm Kate Stone, author of DiceAndDrafts.com, and I'm a board game and book enthusiast. There you go. That's fine. How are we doing, Kay? That's fine. Doing How are we doing good. today? I'm pretty good. So, so. How's the drive over here? You guys live so far away oh, from me. I did not realize how far like away. Backwards. Now you know now, how you feel. Now, anytime you come to my house, I'm going to have you like a um, like a gift, like a candle or something. I was like, thank a you. A traveling basket. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Here's some water. Here's the some little oranges. little mini shampoo yeah. and stuff, you know. You might have to pull over and take a shower. <laughs> oh, bro. Bring a camper sleeping bag. Oh, uh, exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. Because oh, I usually always ask everyone that question. It's like, when you GPS this, like, did you have any reservations? Mm. No, like, uh, we'll see where I'm from before I moved to Florida. It's 30 minutes Word. just to go to, like, a Walmart or a grocery Word. store. It's, like, 27 miles. To 30 the minutes? Yeah. So, I'm used to driving. Bruh. And as I was driving out here, I started seeing, like, pine trees and like <laughs> fields and I was like oh I'm back home I went through a time portal <laughs> murder <laughs> oh, no for real it's like it's backwards out here yeah but it's dope it's quiet yeah. you know what I'm saying you got of course the neighbors be shooting all the time but yeah do yeah. they really yeah yeah where I, I grew up like July 4th uh, New Year's random occasions anything that has to do with fireworks that's when they start hearing the gun <laughs> yeah where i grew up there was a lot of hunting because there was fields Word. you'd see like bears run across the yard or like you know tears and stuff yeah. and like i remember growing up we would set up little like um target practice in the backyard and shoot like mm -hmm. so okay. and now as an adult like i don't think i've touched a gun since i was probably like 14 Word? 15 yeah at you all. don't carry like you no, don't oh, not really no. is that like in the don't tell them that. the vision Oh, yeah, you can't. You know what I'm saying? She could. She, no, I just, I mean. She I, has an AK in her garage. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she's I've seen tit. supplying I've Ukraine. seen tit. No, 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 no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, so, before our audience asks, um, where are you from exactly? Cause, I'm originally from North Carolina. All right, because people are going to confuse yeah. that with Texas or Tennessee. So, you got to. I get um, Alabama a lot, too, down here. Alabama. A lot, yeah. Alabama. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can feel no, that. No, it's definitely a Carolinian accent. All right, all right. What made you decide to come down here? Um, I never wanted to be a person who was born and raised in the same town. The people. It was the people, guys. People? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I always wanted to, like, travel and explore and experience different, mm -hmm. um, you know, environments. And when I was in college, I visited Southwest Florida near Clearwater and just absolutely fell in love with, like, the laid-back vibe and how beautiful it was. And I felt like Florida has so much to offer. It has major cities, but then it still has, like, you know, spots that are still the very rural. rural. Yeah. yeah. It's the and, America of America. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, such a cultural melting pot. There's so many different aspects to it. I just felt like it kind of had, like, everything I was looking for. So after college, when my husband was offered a job in southwest Florida, we just, we didn't even hesitate. We just Word. took it. That's fine. Really? Wow. That's, That's awesome. Fire. So how long ago did you guys move down? Eight years. Eight years. Eight wow. Years. So she's in doctor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're one of us. You're I'm, official. I'm a yeah, now. you're Floridian. I, I feel it. I know. I, you guys are talking about my accent, and every time I go back home, they talk about how you sound like I sound different. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you don't fit in over there. You don't fit in over there. It's like that transatlantic, bro. Yeah. She has that hybrid accent, mm -hmm. which is cool. You know, if you really kind of think about it, it's like. We'll have hybrid accents. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah we will. Because everyone comes down, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have people from Jersey, people from New York. 
Do you find yourself uh, switching to Cold their switching? accent? Oh, definitely. When, <laughs> I, when, my, when you're talking to them? Even if I talk, uh, like, so if I say now, if I'm just talking about my family, I'll talk one way. But if I say what I'm going to talk about my mama, all of a sudden my accent will start getting heavier. Oh, yeah, okay. So, and when I talk to my mom and my grandma, it'll definitely come out. And I'll hear myself and I'll be like, oh, what man. are you doing? <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> no, but that's, that's cool, though. Like, you kind of have that spectrum of, you know, how you can talk to mm-hmm. people. And yeah. that can kind of go into so many other things as well, too. You know what I'm saying, but glad you're down here. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, you know for sure. Um, I know that uh, off camera we were talking about you um, being a school teacher. What got you into teaching? Out of any and everything you could have done, um, why that specific? And what grade did you teach? Middle school is the I taught middle school all grades. Um, my love of literature is really what got me into teaching. Uh, like I just. You know, I love books. I love sharing literature with other individuals. I think power. that the written word is like, you know, it brings everybody together because mm. sharing stories is how you grow as an individual, is how you relate to other people. I don't know about you guys, but like reading books is one of the first time I was able to be like, hey, I identified with somebody who felt like internally how I felt and I was never you know, willing to say that out loud because mm. I was scared of being judged and then seeing it written on paper made me feel like, oh, I'm not alone. Okay. Uh, okay. What was the first book you've ever read that that light bulb click like this stuck with you? You knew you, you were could. going you knew you were going uphill from there. Yeah. Um, I don't know that's a really impossible question to answer because there's never been a time I didn't read. One of my earliest memories was of my father, like he had the alphabet around my bedroom and he would sit every night teaching me the alphabet and my mom used to always make up stories before I went to bed. Um, and I just remember always reading and always going to the library. My grandmother was an avid reader. My uncle was an avid reader. So I've just always, you know, read. And I remember one of the first books that like was my absolute favorite that I learned by heart was Cookie Monster and the Cookie Tree. And the first line is, it was a Tuesday, but that's not important. That was a witch who wasn't a very good witch, and that does matter. It was like my favorite book in the world. So when you say Cookie Monster, you mean Sesame Street? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Sesame Street changing lives all the way. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's like my favorite book when I was little. They need to bring that back. They need to push that type of, you know, engagement with with kids and and literature yeah yeah Uh, because i know that a lot of uh a lot of children are reading nonsense today and they're not learning anything well they're reading oh yeah the tablet it's not even actual books in it like it it, they're literally making libraries irrelevant because they're always i don't know it doesn't leave anything to the imagination personally because if you can visually see it on the tablet then like i feel like reading developed my imagination Gotcha, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, you're able to visualize more. I, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Which is why, like, when they would make book movies, you'd have that, oh, well, that's not how I pictured X, yeah. y, Or that's not how it looked in the book. Right. Or they went saying? this direction in the book, but they did, did this direction like, in the movie. I remember, what was it, fifth grade when I was doing the Sunshine book competition? I read this series called Gregory the Overlander. And essentially, like, he got shrunk down to the size of, like, uh, a pea or something Green like that. Rice. And he met this entire race of like dark people who lived in the sewers and in the shadows I've and stuff. I've never heard of this And series. they were, and they had like a translucent pale white skin with purple eyes. Interesting. And they were waging this, this war adventure? against, yeah. It was, Holy it was shit. the last level of the sunshine book. It was like this book with like a thousand fifty pages. I'm gonna have to like. Yeah, Google Gregor. This book. Oh, Gregor you're gonna have to like text me that. That text. that book, just it changed my life in terms of like how I, you know, read literature and just you know use my imagination. And they were essentially waging a war against rats, rats that lived in the sewers. <laughs> but it was graphic. That's gonna be a never-ending battle. It was a graphic story, but it was so detailed and like he met the princess of the the underlanders uh-huh. and stuff like that and they're like uh, oh and he got transported with his baby sister who was deaf or blind i believe she was deaf, deaf yeah his baby sister was deaf interesting yeah so she was missing like a sense in, in in that sense and the the rat the underland people were blind so that, that makes sense right you see yeah. what i'm saying so it was just like i don't know just the way the story just kind of like converged and I don't know. You got to read it. See, read when it. I was growing up, I was really obsessed with Goosebumps. And then that emerged oh, into yeah. Fear Street. And then there was, 
I cannot remember the name of the series, but I read everyone in the series, so you think I would know it's Sweet Valley High, maybe? It was about these two twins, the blonde, like, they always had these two blonde girls it's, on the I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was Sweet Valley High. Yeah. Because yeah. Jeffy used to read the Babysitter's yeah, Club. Yeah, the Babysitter's Club. Gotcha. And yeah, yeah, and I used to always read those books when I was younger. What about uh, Magic Treehouse? I don't know. Maybe oh, that was a good The Magic Treehouse series. Um, I don't think I read that one. With a with a brother and the sister with that the would and jump sister. into a new uh, and, oh okay, and they I would know about and it. it would spin and whirl and, yeah. and they would end up in like and they learn something about history history they would end up dinosaurs uh, the cool. fall of Rome ancient Egypt ancient Egypt but they had to be careful oh, because oh, they would die, they could they could potentially get killed they could potentially if they get didn't killed, right. be careful but mm-hmm. those are kids books so they were but they would they would always the... meet like a guide. Huh. Like, they would make a friend by accident, and that would be their guide. Mm-hmm. And there was, like, this overseer who they didn't know who the overseer was, but he would just appear gotcha. in each, like, you know. Yeah, and then by the time I made it to middle school, like, I was obsessed with Harry Potter and Narnia oh, and uh, all of those Narnia. fun things. Didn't Narnia. know Narnia was connected oh, to Harry Narnia Potter. No, was but, I mean. I that's when I got into fan- Narnia. That's how I got into, like, the fantasy realm, yeah. like, the other worlds and because that's probably my favorite or most read genre is fantasy. The Giver. I love The Giver. Oh, so good. Give, giver, Gathering Blue, and then there, I forgot what the last. I think there's four total, right? There's four, yes. Yeah, there's four total. I, I, I read the first three and never read the last one because the last one uh, came out like not recent, but when I was out of high school and I was I had already lost interest in that series. See, I had only yeah. ever read The Giver as a child, and then when the movie came back out as an adult, I found out that it was a part of a series, and so I went back and reread it. Read all, yeah. mm. Hatchet. You also had yeah, Hatchet, Hatchet was really Hatchet good, was too. Crazy. That was crazy. I was like, yeah. y'all really made this kid go through it. <laughs> and Lord of the Flies. Oh, never. That one will always stay Lord with me. Lord of the Flies. Flies. Animal Farm. Yes. That one will always stay with me. Some things is different. I know. Things is that, that's how they scared kids away from communism. <laughs> <laughs> but we're living it right now. <laughs> that's how they scared you away from socialism and communism. Do you ever see yourself matters. writing a book in the future? Right, yeah. Um, I actually was working on a novel. I got about 40,000 words through. It was a fantasy novel. Um, mm-hmm. I just got away from it because of life last year, mm-hmm. and I hope to go back to it. Right, for sure. Yeah, and uh, what, what genre are you trying to go for? Um, it was definitely a fantasy yeah. novel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, like, in, uh, how teen romance? Something. Someone's magical. Uh, no. It's vampire a... werewolf. No, no, <laughs> no vampires, no werewolves. I mean, I do like vampires. <laughs> no, no. It was uh, more of like a different society where um, outsiders come in mm-hmm. and are able to take over an entire society and kind of almost uh, not exactly enslave the people or population that mm-hmm. were there but kind of like definitely make them more subjugated because the people that take over have magic and are able to be more of like a dominating Holy society shit. we'll make better decisions oh, for you man. yeah so mm. and they're like elementals they deal with the different elements okay that's fine and they sure. have like an old gladiator stadium where they make you know the non-magic people fight they barbaric you know Damn. oh man savages that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy i love that that's scary but i feel like do you think we could end up in in a in a realm like that with robots with robots yeah because me i'm i have a wholehearted belief we should never give robots rights Oh, like, you just, you I just, will always be nice to the robots. So should, I'm never. I'm not gonna re- never give them rights. Like, he was watching. He was watching I robot. He's like, get your ass in the garage. Get him to go. I don't give a shit. If, if, if they bad. start selling us robots, your station area is in the garage, away from my sight, and I'm locking the door every single time. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that doesn't yeah. matter. You get no rights around me. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't care if you gain sentient consciousness. <laughs> Whatever, free will. He sounds, like, will, he sounds no like a slave owner. <laughs> no rights. You, you're a robot. You get no rights. No rights. Absolutely. I don't care if you're in the streets fighting. No, sorry. No rights. You for get me. no sympathy for nope, me. No sympathy. What about clones? <laughs> See, now you're messing with the soul, and that's corrupted right there. That's already corrupt. May I, what is it, plead the fifth over here? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you're, you're corrupting. I'm just story. asking, I'm just that's asking. That's why it's international law. You cannot clone people. Because we still don't know what. It does up here. What it does up there. Yeah. That's facts. 
That's crazy. Oh my god. So we also talked about you working on a project that you've started uh, last year. Which project? Oh, a yeah. few projects. Yeah, yeah. Which one do you want to start with? Ooh. Are you talking about Dyson dress? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I started it actually this January. So. Oh really? I thought it was four done. weeks ago. When we went to the Christmas party, I thought that's. No, it was an it was an idea that I'd had when you went to the Christmas party. Mm. It got put into motion in January. Okay. okay. Literally, okay. it's recent. Yeah. Oh, so this is new to us. Yeah. Yes, it is. Updates. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go. Yeah. So Dyson Drafts is a website that I've created mm-hmm. and a brand that I'm working on to help connect, you know, local Southwest Florida gamers. In which um, I do like product reviews of different games, and then I pair it with game night um, advice. So if you want to host a game night, the idea is kind of talk about the connections that games have. Mm-hmm. So rather than just saying like, oh, I rate this game a four, and I rated a four because I like this and I like this, but I didn't like this. The artwork was great. The mechanics. <laughs> was this but there's no I want to talk about like whether or not this would work for you and your play style and then take it that next step so just because I like area control if I have a gaming group that you know one individual likes to be on their phone and the other one you know likes to talk a lot you know there's certain games that might not work for that particular gaming group so I talk about whether or not it would work for a particular play style and a particular um, environment and I talk about the length of it and whether it would be good for, like, you know, a more intimate game night or whether it would be great for, like, you know, getting a lot of players in. Mm-hmm. And then I talk about ideas of, like, pairing it with drinks or food or places, things like that. And then I'm, um, okay. yeah. Well, wow, that's a lot. Okay. Do you think it could go outside the realm of Southwest Florida and, like, introduce it to, like, other people in, in different counties and or states? I mean, it would be definitely fun if it would go and spread through all of Florida or it, different states. It'd, yeah. be, it'd be easier for a lot of people, like you said, well, that have different playing styles. Here's the thing, Jeff. Yeah, and that was one thing I just talked about. I think one of my last articles was discussing, you know, as an adult, how it's harder to make friends. And mm-hmm. I was talking about even if you're not in the tabletop or board game industry, there is such a wide variety of styles of games and themes mm-hmm. and play styles and length that, you know, you can find and connect with almost anybody over mm-hmm. a game. Word. Cause that's how we connect with people right? oh yeah for sure now it's online not in person anymore so yeah like even well even now like when we get with friends and we play psych you know what i'm saying yeah like so in, in terms of you know uh uh what's the word i'm looking for um a, a big word no, it's a good <laughs> word <laughs> yeah it's a it's a word that encompasses she, the idea because i don't want to have to she teaches jeff she things. can help you okay I, I don't know Give um, me synonym. Describe it. Let's see. Now this is a new game. Can I guess the break word? it down? So like screening, reviewing, rating, dissecting, analyzing, over- analyzing. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Look at that. Thank you. Because if you were gonna judge it, it would be evaluating. Right. But you're talking about the different components that put mm-hmm. it together. So that's analyzing. Mm-hmm. And then you release that information to people. Yeah. And, okay. Because there's already so many people that review and tell you their rating, and there's already so many people that, you know, give you the play-by-play, like, um, strategy guide. Yeah. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking to analyze the different components and tell okay. you before you purchase it and before you sit down, yeah. are you going to sit down and be stuck in a four-hour game and be like, oh, man, this is not yeah. not for me. Mm-hmm. And this it provides not, that and community then, yeah. building, too. Cause but that's why I say it's awesome like if, it, if it were right. to go outside the realm of Southwest right. Florida because then like people that. can build – what they're looking for it's like when you're yeah. signing up for something ask yeah. your height your age all that stuff like that you just do That's that cool, cause you in, could, in the game you format could build, so many communities could branch off from yeah that. and like we just started in january we did our first gamer of the month where we highlight someone local and talk about how they're influential in the society you heard you know? that working yeah that was, that was a good job gay so- that's awesome. And different ways you can connect with them. So maybe you can start meeting new gamers in the area. You understand why I believe in the future of Southwest Florida, Jeff? Yes, that's why I'm still, that's why I built a house. We're actually having an event tomorrow night. I don't know if, oh, you, you guys aren't on um, Facebook, are you? No. Oh, yeah, we're having an event, Dyson Drafts. They kicked me off. Retro Arcade. It's $10. And um, you come and... We're, I'm setting up several tabletop games, and I'm demoing Astra and Call to Adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll have a bunch of games you can choose from. And when you come, you can play the games. And then in the downtime and in between time, you have unlimited arcade access. Oh, that's fun. Wow. wow. That's amazing. And this and what, is something what? you put together yourself? Um, Me and the owner of Retro. Retro. He reached out when he saw my blog and said, I, would you ever want to do an event? And I was like, sure. Let's get Damn. together. Let's, you know, Damn. Right. Sensational. Let's. That's fine. Let's play some games. And what time does this run to? Um, it starts at six and goes until they close. And where would um, 
Where's it? Where's the local? Where's the retro arcade located? On Fowler Street in Fort Myers. Okay, Fowler Street Fort Myers. Fire. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. Y'all heard that? Yeah. We're gonna play some games. Shorter right. time than we man. have, and she's getting a lot more done. Bro, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Bro, bro. That's fire. And I'm passionate about books and board games. I love people. Those are the two it. things I like. Yeah. It's amazing. But I like it. I like you got the plan, you got the vision, you know, and you're doing it, and you're doing it. That's fire. All right, your book challenge. My book challenge. Yeah. Uh, to read 100 books this year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the total year or just? Uh, every... Yeah, the total year. So prior to 2020, I averaged about 120 books a year. I've read 100 books a year every year of my life since I was about eight. Um, I but in 2020, that. I started my master's program and time mm-hmm. management. And then other things happened since then, which mm-hmm. you guys knows about. And I just have wasn't able to read very many last year. Of um, I sustained an injury last year medically that made it where I couldn't read for mm-hmm. a while. And I read less than 20 books last year. So, like, Damn. my challenge is to get back to my reading. Double it. Yeah. yeah, so 200 yeah. books by the end double of this year. It. No, what the hell? Yeah. Double it. What? We had to double you can get, it. What? You, can, you can go get elementary five-page books. That's you can read saying. Dr. Read, read the newspaper. A book is a read book. Read a poem. It doesn't matter how thick or small. It does not matter. Absolutely. So 200 no, just to catch up for last year. Any type of literature, right. you know, anything right. that helps your cognition. You for know, sure. you can read manga. You can read comic books. You can read a book. You can read a physical book, paper book, nonfiction, fiction. One I piece. Don't care. The greatest fiction ever. I written. have not got sucked into One that. Piece. I've heard so much about you it. You will understand. And, <sighs> it's and history. Take your time. You don't have to jump into it. You it will seems just daunting. What you my brother always says is understand. just start after the time skip. Because if you start before, I mean, it'd be no, a no, 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 no. Because you, you like character. Yeah, I like thing. character. Development. You love character. I okay. like the narrative. If arc. you do not watch the first half, you will not give a crap about what they're because the entire of. story from beginning. Because the first, it's just like you're watching these little babies become great, show flashes of greatness, and it's just like, and it all pays off. And it pays off spectacularly. But it's just a great story. Okay, maybe I'll add it to my TBR. I mean, I have a, a lot of books. Okay. But it's easy because it's like, it's easy to pace yourself because it's written one chapter a week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's been going on for a long time now, right? Yep, mm-hmm. since I was born. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Since I was... And the show started in 98. He started writing that series in the eighth grade. You gotta be that great. You and gotta be going. Yeah, he wrote the end. You got. Yeah, he wrote the end first. That's an interesting method. It's amazing. And now he's just building. Oh man, ever. he wrote the end and everything, and and that just allows him absolute freedom. Huh. Absolute. To tell freedom. the story and go any direction. Any yes. direction, because it's such a big story. Like you, you have to care about everything. Everything matters. Seems so overwhelming. Oh man! Now we're gonna fast forward in a year from now, and I'm gonna like be wearing a one. You're gonna be a shirt. fan. <laughs> Straw hat, yep. absolutely. You gonna have a carry, scar on your the chest. figurines. <laughs> I mean, look You're at like that. man, Kyle Curry. I got Bizarro on top. It, <laughs> oh. oh man, just great character. Just it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing character. Yeah, he though. has his faults. You know who doesn't? Of yeah. course. Like I can critique it. I'm not just. Well, everything can be critiqued. Right, and no matter how saying? great something is and how many people love it in a the fandom, there's mm-hmm. always going to be people who exactly. it doesn't click for them. Exactly. A lot of people don't understand that. You yeah. know? Well, it's, they got to watch the show it's first. It's okay to not like something. I mean, I have friends, a friend, specifically a shared friend who doesn't like Harry Potter. And I mean, I don't love that against him. Oh, uh, he'll be on soon. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, please bring that up. Great. If he Which answers my next question, if he watches this, if he listens to this, because he's gonna know you're on here, so he's probably gonna listen to this episode. Yeah. Uh, you know who you are. You know who you are. The first time we met, you were like, "Oh, so you like Harry Potter?" Yeah, oh, you like Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, he's man. like that set the tone for the rest of the friendship. But you throw a Spider Man in his face. No, stuff. first he stole my chair, and then he insulted my tattoo because it was Harry Potter. I mean. <laughs> that's amazing you told someone that yeah so how'd you mean it so yeah he stole my chair and shit it on my, my tattoo, tattoo. <laughs> first day i met him and we're like best friends God. now <laughs> that's fine that's fine can't even man. shit on spider-man because he loves him so much what's wrong with spider-man there's nothing wrong with him that's what i'm saying you can't shit on oh, spider-man okay. because everyone, can't. he's really he's, he's, he's so well i actually did hear someone shit on spider-man so when i went in for training today there was some today people. 
today Let's when talk I went about in for this. training. I mean, this is yeah. the current event. When, right now. when I it went in for training today, um, I guess they were trying to. They were doing like a hybrid class where they were training uh, new employees. They were also doing interviews uh-huh. for new employees, yeah. and then they were also updating CVL training and CVC training. For current employees and I was doing I was updating my CVC training and some random kid walks in and I'm just asking him a question hey do you know if we're supposed to you know do this uh, uh, observer questionnaire here and he's like I don't know uh, this is my second day here in training I was like alright whatever and I was like what's your name Zach so me and Zach start speaking to each other and then the trainer comes in and she looks directly at Zach and she's like and she asked him this question looking at him. Are you Pierre Jean-Marie? And I'm like, bro, are you for real? I was like, does he look like a Pierre Jean-Marie? No. And then this whole discussion like ensued where uh, another trainer came in. And I guess he was reviewing the results to his class. Uh-huh. And she, the, other, the, the woman trainer asked him, does he look like a Pierre? And then... He's like, no, but he looks like a Peter. And then he's like, ah, I'd rather be a Pierre than a Peter. Oh, yeah. And then and then they're like, yeah, Peter's such a loser name. Name a Peter that's not a loser. He's like, what about Spider-Man? Nah, Peter's a loser. I was like, oh, that's tough. I'm like, that's tough. We need to go back and have and a I conversation. I just sat there in silence. As they, yeah, it was just... Yeah, we're not friends. Yeah, we couldn't be friends after that. I don't know how I feel about that. I was like, I know your name is Zach now, but we can't be friends anymore. You just shat on Spider-Man. Yep, you did. You just shat on Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. That's the end of the discussion. But if it was Cadence, I don't know. I don't know. We'd still be friends if I didn't like Spider-Man? Yeah. No, I definitely like Spider-Man. He's top tier. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. There's Spider-Man. He's amazing. And then there's, there's Bel- then there's Batman, Thor, and Iron Man. I mean, Iron Man's okay. You don't like Iron Wait, Man? Wait, you don't. Mm. We ain't talking about Robert Downey Jr. I'm just talking about Iron Man. Yeah, Jr. but he's that's it. He made, that's it. That's he, Iron that, Man. That's you ask anyone in but history. But I grew up watching. I grew up watching. Doesn't matter. You ask anyone <laughs> in history. Who's Iron, Iron Man? Man. Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. All right. That guy called Sherlock. He is. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say Sherlock yeah. Holmes. He is officially <laughs> canon. I don't care what they do with the MCU. He is canon. Okay. All right. That Iron Man is canon. What the heck? I'm Iron Man. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you needed. Galaxy saved. Was it the galaxy or was it the universe? I, the universe. Yeah, I think it was the universe. Really? No, the galaxy because half it was the, galaxy the galaxy disappeared. It could be the universe, because then, like, now we're getting into the whole multiverse thing, and, you know, if Kang knew, if Kang is in control. The Conqueror? Yeah. Oh, timelines. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going off topic. All right, all right. So, Reasons. I want to know. Yes. Where do you want to take this? Like, how far do you want to go with this? That's a great question. As far as it will go? Is that an answer? Is that a real answer? I mean, because we can say the same thing about this, too. Right. Um, I mean, I would love to be able to, you know, not only have events and have, like, a grow the community in Southwest Florida, but I would love to see it expand. That'd be amazing, yeah. especially if you go to events, you travel okay. to different states and start it. And yeah. Because on the... Let's look at the realism goggles. <laughs> Reality. Reality. Okay. The reason why we ask that is because we know when you start a business, you have to incorporate scaling. And who, who, what you're willing to give responsibilities to and how to manage those responsibilities mm-hmm. and still have full control over it. Over it. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You because know. once you bring more people into the fold, you mm-hmm. know, you lose some of that control. Right. Yeah. Understand. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's just the essentially keep the key to the kingdom, but share it. Right. Oh no, no. keep the master key. Yes. And give people. You, you want to be debuted on on YouTube. He does you this can. every interview. You yeah. you he no he mostly potatoes every interview. Yeah, he potatoes it. He, he, he likes to act different. Hi. He likes Hi. to act different. Hi. If it's a guy, he potatoes. Well, it's a, if it's a girl, he's well, all we over. We talked it. about pup cups earlier, didn't we? Yeah. What's a pup cup again? It's a. 
You go well, start. You go not start. Obviously, well, he's not. Spoiled. You go to Starbucks. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, DQ does them too. Yeah. Really? They like if you order a pup cup, they'll give you like a little cup with like whipped cream and a milk bone on it. And he just licks it. Okay, I was about to ask a dumb question, but I still need. There's to no ask such you. thing as dumb questions. Does it taste like dog food? No, it's I a mean, regular. The, it's just whipped cream. It's just whipped. cream. I mean, oh, except okay. for the places that give you the little mini milk bone okay. on top, that is actually dog. Because then that would set you up to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, so, to answer your earlier question, yes. right now, it's just for fun and to build a community and see if okay. I can, you know, get more things <clears throat> going. Because prior to 2020, we had, like, a good gaming group that met at a restaurant <laughs> every Friday, and then there was other people who did, like, you know, a bunch of different events, and then 2020 shut down the at the places, yeah. and then we still have some great local game shops, but there's only a few that do, like, Saturday gaming, because Friday, most of them do Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. and a lot of places, it's more profitable to do, like, the CCG gaming, or the, like, Warhammer and tabletop miniatures. There's mm -hmm. not as much that do actual, like, classic board games, and I know that, um... Locally, I know there is a group that does, you know, the Gamers of Gulf Coast. They do an event every three months, like mm -hmm. a weekend retreat. Mm -hmm. And there's little events like that happening, but it feels like we're all segmented now. So, like, I would love to be able to, like, not Bring only get us more together, but to grow the board gaming community right. as a whole, especially, like, with the resurgence of board games being back, yeah. you know, relevant, and they're yeah. growing. I mean, I was just watching a... um a YouTube video, I'm trying to remember who it was now, it wasn't, it wasn't Dice Tower, it was somebody else I was watching, and I don't remember who it was now, but they were talking about how they looked at 2022, and they had played 88 new games, but there was like over, like this astronomical number, like 4,000 new games, and I was like, that were published, Jeez. and I was wow, like, that's insane. like, I can't even keep up with Jeez. that, that's insane, because, you know, 10 years ago... Nobody was like, on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like what? Twenty You're, new games a year. I don't even. Let's let's look this up. One day we're gonna look this up. And then well, numbers. and then too, when um uh every time a new game comes out, especially with uh with Skyler, he buys automatically. It's like two three hundred dollars. And then we'll crack it open at some point. Exactly. We'll crack it open like, and then we'll play. Yeah, that's facts. That's so, how all my boys. Are, even with like, the pre-orders, like yeah, so they would run out of it before it even comes out. So see, like, actually it's, just. I actually just wrote. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're I good. just wrote about that at the shelf of shame because I was looking at. I think I had fifteen or sixteen. And so I have one game that's like eight years old and I've never cracked it open. Why? Why do we do that? It's because it's shiny. It's new. Yeah. It's exclusive. It's not yeah, gonna like not, now. Yeah. More games are hitting the shelf. Like Barnes Noble and Target has like mm -hmm. a decent like gateway like mm -hmm. you right. know section. Right. But like prior to that, it was like oh you know you're not gonna be able to find these in stores. Yeah. You have to buy them. You have to wait for them to be shipped. Yeah. And it's like then now we have all these games we don't play. It's a <laughs> well, it's like having all these movies I don't watch. Yo, they finesse. I just get them to collect. Like, them. Yeah, everything's limited. I know. I I'm very proud of myself. I've played two of my Shelf of Shame games. So <laughs> very proud of myself. Oh, they were man. the most recent ones I acquired, though. So. Oh my god! <laughs> and the old like, guy let's, 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 let's crack in it. tears. Like yeah. wow, before wow. me. Before <laughs> blowing me. off that dust. <laughs> the new ones were more relevant for my review. No, but I love it because you're already networking with, with places to bring the community yeah, together, cool. which is why I have a vision in my head of you. Um, I feel like that you can actually grow this thing into a point where you can make it an event. Like a convention. A yeah. convention where people pay a certain amount of money to get in, but it comes with all these amenities like food, uh, right. board games, like you said, the retro arcade, all this stuff like that. And then they can all... Uh, gain access to your website to not only look at the itinerary or different types of um, what do you call it like um, events that they want to do like there's always like silver gold and platinum uh -huh. type things and then they have access to certain things that others don't like I see this going huge but that's just me I like to think above and beyond the box but I see where you're going with this and you've only been doing this you only start January the thought process started last year yeah so it's amazing that you're doing all that with yeah normally like it takes a long yeah. time, and you're doing it but real quick. most of that is thinking of your plan. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it is thinking. And then I think I'm very lucky because I, you know, have been very fortunate to be brought into the fold by, like, people in this community who already are established in right. the gaming world. Yeah. Like, I know individuals who already, you know. And you're helping them out. When you put bring the event together. Oh, I was yeah. like, am I? They're helping me out, I feel <laughs> like. Well, it's a... It's a it, uh, uh, it's like a give and take relationship. Give and take, yeah. yeah. But no, so I'm fortunate enough to already play with, you know, several 
great gamers in the area that already you know are established mm-hmm. and so they've been very accommodating to bring me into the fold because okay. we share the same passion that's fire you know that's lift fire. each other up that's fire which is great yeah, that's amazing yeah. okay yeah no i wish we had a weekly spot though i really did like that's one thing that I definitely would like to see happen. I know that that has been talked about a lot in the gaming group in Southwest Florida, how they miss having a weekly spot, and there's been several ideas thrown out there, but nowhere has been really concrete, and so that is definitely somewhere I'd want to take it, is to be able to find like a venue that mm-hmm. could accommodate weekly for Friday night. There is places that do Saturday. Like I know Dragon Slayer, mm-hmm. a lot of people go to on Saturday, mm-hmm. but there's really nowhere for Friday evenings. You ever thought about somewhere along 41? Because that kind of connects... All of Every, everybody. Is yeah. there any game store on Forty One though? That we would have to do some research. Yeah, we'd have to do research. But Somebody like, just needs to open up a board game cafe. Right. Would that somebody be somebody or some yeah. something you would do? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, but Get then that that's LL- whole separate. Activate the <laughs> LLC, but that you remember you have to have <laughs> right. multiple you branch street it, branch. Yeah, yeah. Branch, it. branch it. Like, but that'd be dope. Like, just have like. Because, you know, they're building all these commercial mm-hmm. venues and stuff like that. And then Florida's becoming young. There's nothing but... Yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of young people Young people here. moving down here, especially... They'll go to college here, and then they'll stay. They yeah, don't even go anywhere stay. else. Because the jobs are coming here. Yeah. The jobs are coming here. Yeah, and Florida is blowing up. I think, mm-hmm. what is it, this area, southwest Florida, mm-hmm. is really, like, up and coming. Number Just one. look at, like, Cape Coral or St. Pete, yeah. like, 10, 15 years yeah. ago yeah. compared to now. It's booming. The county is the number one, the fastest growing county. Is it still? In the country. I know it was uh, the fastest growing the year I moved down eight Mm -hmm. years ago. So that's impressive. Especially with uh, so many investments that they're doing, like the LEED 2025 project. Um, Of course, the infrastructure bill that's going to bleed down here. You know what I'm saying? We got a Starbucks. Yeah, we got finally got Starbucks. What, in Lehigh? Yeah. You guys got Starbucks? We got Starbucks. Look at you go. Aspen Dental. Oh, yes. man. Yeah. I actually go to Aspen We're getting Dental. there. That's where I actually go. We're getting there. So we're, we're coming up. Uh, population's already at 114. We're projected to be 250 by 2025. You see what I'm saying? You see that? I know. The past, like, what, 12, 12 mm-hmm. minutes or so on my ride to your house, like, I was seeing sure, all sure. the construction, like, all yeah. the development, all the housing. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's why we picked here, because it's, it's going to come to it's us. The hub. It's the come up. Yeah. It's the come up, you know what I'm saying? And we'll be, we're in tune with the community, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, we know what's happening. We got stories to tell about what's happening in the community for those who are coming here. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? You're, you know? So, but it'd be amazing to for you, I yeah. mean, for you to do something. I'm not telling you to do it, but it would be amazing yeah, if, you did, if you did head that direction, because mm-hmm. it'd be nice. And, of course, like we said, do events every year uh, That'd be dope. and then the money you raise from the events could fuel the next event oh definitely and yeah the next event and the next event so that it's like uh, when they do Megacon yeah and it would also be really great if like we could take and fuel like a um, like a almost like a public library of board games mm-hmm. I don't know like how to make that idea make sense so like right now we all use our private library like our personal games and yes. bring them and compile them but like wouldn't it be great if you had like a I guess that would be a board game cafe wouldn't it but a place where you had like a bunch it's of games you could come check out just, and play there yeah. that would be a board oh, game cafe I'm literally that would be amazing yeah. I think like, <laughs> everything is converging pointing to one direction exactly <laughs> that board game yeah. <laughs> the board game, board game, game. spitting ideas here place. but Something might come into fruition yeah, within fine. the next two or three years for you, so that'd be, dope, that'd be amazing. Like you say, fun I would rate. like to like do a, a live, like a oh yeah, for sure. If you at, definitely go yeah, forward with you, that, if you ever, we will support you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I do. I mean, we we all share a um, a friend. I won't name him because I don't know if he wants his name out there, but that's his dream is to own like an actual cafe that does board games, kind of like um, what is that place in Orlando? Oh, I'm blanking. There's a place, it looks like a D&D tavern, and they have board games everywhere, and it's two stories, oh. and it's like a restaurant, but you also play board games. I'm not talking Kind of like that. You say it's in Orlando? Yeah. I'm blanking. Do they serve mutton there? I, I don't remember. I've been one time when I went to Dice Tower. Because I feel like I know what you're talking about. I... I off the top of my head, I could yeah, not but remember. his dream is to open a like a a cafe, but a cafe that doesn't do like meal meals, that does like food, but like more like grab and go food mm-hmm. like sandwiches and soups and stuff and i know that his dream is a board game is thing. it god gods and monsters no the cloak and, bl- uh, cloak and blasters there you cloak, go cloak, the cloak and cool. blasters yeah 
Yeah. Is it still operating? Yeah, it has 4.6 stars out of 5. Yeah, it's really cool. If you guys have never been, I highly recommend it. It's like two stories, and when you walk in, it looks like you've went into like a and d tavern. And then they have all sorts of like nerd memorabilia yeah. inside. Like they've got like Game of Thrones stuff and like board game stuff, and they have a whole mm. wall of board games. You just grab one and sit down and, and play serve, while you're they eating. They serve burgers and food too. Yeah, deliciousness. So. And then the top story had like um, arcade games or something. I always look at it like this if no one's doing it down here, go for it. Bring it in. Be the yeah. first one down here yeah. and name it what you want to name yeah. it. But I know, yeah, we have a shared friend who like has a dream to open up a, a mm. board game restaurant, I think. Mm. I don't want to own a restaurant. No, just you gotta, yeah. just a board yeah. game cafe. It'll be so easier. So many codes to you gotta abide by. Well, yeah, for sure. It'll be. It'll just be easy to. I mean, right. bring, your own, bring, your own <laughs> bring your own. Bring your own water. Bring your own water. <laughs> oh man, will you be serving alcohol? <laughs> Can you play board games without wine? No, no, you Question can't. Question answered. There yeah. So I mean, a liquor license is easier than yeah. getting a uh, a food. Food. No, yeah. beer and wine license. This is the easiest. Yeah. Like you just get beer and wine. Beer and wine, no liquor. That's too much. No, you that's too have much. A bartender. <laughs> yeah. You gotta make drinks. You gotta uh-huh. have empty names that go yeah. along with the board games. Then you gotta have like little cute molds to make like That'd maple be ice. Cool. Like I can't go like can I get out- just le- outsource <laughs> all of it. What can heck? I get a level seven outer rim, please? <laughs> 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 I just totally made that up. <laughs> I just hey, came up my did. That's cool. That's what I'm saying though. Yeah, like, like, just, unless she creates the menu herself and then says, "All right, this is what we're gonna name it from each kind of board games," and then it has to cool. taste. I feel like You'd be and then you have to taste like you imagine the board game. Board game, exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know. It sounds like a childlike wonder, like a dream. <laughs> like I get to create names of food and design a whole bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Then oh, the, I actually. But then the work actually. <laughs> I actually so, did so. that in January. We played uh, the Wonderland's War, and then I made the Mad Hatter's Tea to go with it, and a drink me potion martini to go with it. And did it taste <laughs> like you imagined it? Yeah, I mean, it was like. Did strong. you serve them in little like vials, like the little health potion vials? That'd be cool. Ooh, no. a little dry ice. I should have. Oh, I that'd didn't. be cool if you serve like little health potion. I did the the tea in like a little teacup, and I did the drink me potion just in a martini glass. A martini glass. Yeah. That's fine. I should have done it in a drink me bottle though. That would be much cooler. Should, I think you should. Uh, <laughs> I think you should. If you really want to do it, I think you should do it. Bulk order thirty thousand. <laughs> miniature ball. <laughs> now she's gonna pull out her red notebook like we have. Mine's green. Oh, green. My notebook. board game one's green, yeah. and my my book one's blue. Yeah. Spitball all your ideas in there. That's why I be telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why. That's why I told uh my boy Fatner because um I'm not gonna tell what he's. Oh no, I have a different one for ideas. So I have a I have a. <laughs> I have a blue one for books, so anytime I read a book, when I stop reading, I quickly jot, like, a takeaway, and then I have the same for my board games. Every time I play a board game, I quickly, like, one thing I liked, one thing I didn't, and the mm. date I played it, and who mm. won, so, I, like, a log, and then I have an idea folder. Anytime, like, an idea hits me, I write in. Then I have my planner, like, what I do every day, and that one's got stickers and a highlighter so that I can reward myself for doing things so that I'll actually do them. <laughs> That's Amazing! Fun. That's fine. I get to highlight it and put a jack skeleton to the Sensation. sticker. Yes. No, I... I mopped the floor today. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's going right here. I love it. Wait, is it a, love... It's a physical planner? Yeah. Like, oh. how else would you get the instant gratification of popping zero on when you, you got the chore doing? I got oh, sticker. You just, go on, little... you just go on the tablet <laughs> Yeah. pop the zero. <laughs> well, then you don't get the satisfaction of kicking the sticker off, yeah, peeling sure. it. Line it up, put it down. You, Jeff, you got put. It, you got to strike Jeff, through Jeff, the mark. You got to put got. on your VR goggles to lift up the <laughs> And then the phone vibrates haptics while you're peeling the sticker. Keep going. Good job. <laughs> oh man, oh my, this is that. what this is what technology that. does to you. Wow, technology ruined. <laughs> ruined it all. No but, no, but I also have a digital notebook too. Digital notebook. But that was just a Google Docs that's just a running like it's just a run on sentence. <laughs> like, just oh my god. You Don't decipher. even use sentence, it's like words. Oh my goodness. It's like some dis- some hieroglyphic. <laughs> you gotta decipher that crap. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. I looked at it the other day at a bunch of links and I was like, What is this? Why am I what is this? Then I opened it, it was like, Oh yeah, this was games I was researching to buy. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh man. I got a question. Are you an avid meme user? Do you use memes? No. No. I play what you, you need. What? what? 
Hmm. Okay, so you understand, like... Yeah, like, if I see, like, a cute little video, like, a 30-second little video with music, I'll share it. But mm-hmm. do I make them? Am I going to go out of my way? No. Like, ooh, okay. Do I appreciate them? Right. Yes. Okay. So, like, in terms of meme level, because I'm going to ask you a real, like, it's not thought provoking. It's, it's like thought provoking. No, me. it's a bullshit. He's gonna go down the rabbit. No, hole. No, it's okay. It's a rabbit hole question. <laughs> Sensation. I'm ready. I'm ready. Because, because I'm always like you know I'm online. Like I understand, you know memes. I've I've seen the evolution of meme, where it was just like, you know, like a Rick Roll to mm-hmm. you know the captioned memes. You had the Velosa, the the Velociraptor, the anti joke chicken. Yeah. You know, a Grumpy Cat. To like now memes speak where you can have an entire conversation in memes. Yeah, that's the same way with the evolution of like emojis, right? Right. Yeah. Do you ever feel like we're going down a path of our language is evolving? Right. Where we can just speak through images. You can get a complete That's what the Egyptians did. I was gonna say, hasn't that always been a thing though? I think this is something that just recircles. Like they try to expand and expand and expand, like, you know, be more descriptive, add more in, and then they try to be more concise. Like I think that each mode has its own purpose and its own pros and cons Mm. list. Okay. Like there's benefits and limitations to each, right? Right. Because like if I overly describe something, sure, you can get every little nuance of it and you can like imagine and that's wonderful. But then also sometimes like a simple picture like is just effective. I think it depends on what you're trying to convey. What you're trying to convey. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So like I am an English major and I can write and, you know, expand my sentences. Mm -hmm. But then when I text you guys, I don't care if it's a typo. Look, it's quick. It's efficient. Uh. Like speech to text do not care like did you understand what i was saying we're moving quick gotta go now if we're sitting down reading like or sending you an email that's another thing you know i'm sitting down yeah purposeful like i need to make sure that i convey what i want to say it literally well because for me i used to slang slang text and then the the one i dated before was so adamant about how i type that now i just type everything with punctuation full commas I, i'm sorry I like, but if you I send can't. me a text message with punctuation <laughs> the whole thing i do not have time for that <laughs> i got books to read over here short simple tell me what you need right exactly <laughs> bro, how, bro how, how the how do the gen z's be they will just they won't just type out the idea they will send you fragments of the sentence oh my god so you'll get Michael. a string of text I'll ask, say, okay, hey, so. I'm going bring, outside today bring, to go get some bring, eggs so, at the store. So bring, Michael, like, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a third returning guest on the show. Okay. And every time I text him, ask him how he's doing, how's his gaming going, because he's trying to build a career off uh-huh. of that. When I text him, one th- how you doing, text message, text message, just like, who is that? Oh, it's Michael, isn't it? I'm like, yep, because he does it fragments. He doesn't send the entire well, thing. Like, no, see, he I'm, feels like it's too long. So I'm, he's I'm busy doing something else and I have to swipe on it. I go in the general vicinity and hopefully y'all will get what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait, you know how to use... Okay, I remember the first time they introduced swipe. Nobody like, knew how to use back it. Back in the day. I started, you know, you Yeah, I did that too. Because it was dope, but yeah. like, no, I never it. continued. And now I see people use swipe just yeah, so... Most of the time it's great because I can just do like this and get a whole paragraph. But every once in a while it'll like throw a random word that makes absolutely uh, no, no sense, sense yeah. in. And I'm like, eh, 10 out of the 12 words were right. You should be able to figure it out. It's still evolving. Figure it out. Oh, man. So you just think that shit. What the heck? Yeah. But no, I mean, that's the same as like when you're having conversational speech with a friend versus when you get up in front of someone and want to like, you know, present your idea. You're going to yeah. talk a different way. Mm. So, I mean, I think that it just, it depends on your audience and what you're trying to. Well, like you said, language evolves. Yeah. That's it's true. just the way we speak. Another question. Shoot. All right. Since we just got off of speaking on education in the beginning, I wanted to ask you, where do you see education system education going. system oh, like Jesus. yes with, as with a, the advent of that's what we were going to ask her as a teacher technology ai She's you know, like i like got a swig of water first answers how do you gauge a child's intellectual development their 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 skills when they no longer like besides social skills 
in school, how can a child really like? From based off what you've seen on how so many teachers that are our age mm -hmm. are teaching their these children their personal beliefs and stuff, actually what they actually should be learning. How would you gauge? Well, it's not even it's not even what they should actually be. It's just like the idea of teaching of education like because if we're speaking on transition sure. mm -hmm. like how does education evolve with ai technology always in your face instant information you know what i'm saying like um well one thing i've noticed is just because they have access to instant information doesn't mean they know how to period. you know analyze right. it evaluate it mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. it so like they'll have all this but then if you ask like okay so what does that mean what's the nuance of that what's the implication what was the author's purpose of that right. uh, so thinking. you just have right. to like restructure what you're aiming for so we're no longer aiming for them to like before you had to teach them like how to find the information and that's still just as relevant today you'd be surprised at how many individuals like will go on google and they'll like have a question like this really specifically long question they'll type the whole thing word for word but see that's not how seo works mm. and that's not how they're going to pick up like all these other things you're mm. going to get these articles so you're not going to be able to find what you need so you have to figure out like what specifically am i looking for and how would i search for that and how would i find it and then is the source biased or non-biased is it going to be credible or not so it's just like you have to reframe exactly what you're trying to teach them to look for okay if that makes sense i understand so there's a mass amount of information so now how to reduce it down to what you right. need right because now you almost have too much information where before you were trying to find anything you could you now could. it's sorting through to find what you need the and then how right. to you know read between the lines and understand and comprehend what's being said to you okay okay so like Going so, in. like, with cooking, right? Right. I could give you all the ingredients in a recipe, but if nobody's ever taught you, like, how to how actually, actual you're not going to be able to do it. So. Is, gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So but, like... Technology is just a tool, a different way. So, of, you don't you don't think... You, think, sorry, you don't think it's hindering them you don't, from... You don't think <clears throat> someone... Okay. I think everything in balance. I think okay. that, you know, I see the benefits, and I use a lot of technology in my classroom. I gamify my classroom. I, you know, use a lot of it, but then there's also times where we completely shut everything out and, you know, pull out paper and do it a different Critical way, thinking. and, like, we'll hang up sticky notes and walk around the wall and be completely silent. We're not allowed to talk. We have to write and then comment and do charts all around. So I think that there is, you know, you can get stuff from different modes. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all. Mm -hmm. I feel it. So I think that it's just another tool to add to the arsenal and it shouldn't be used in the place of, so if you're now like, oh, we have these programs that do it and you just sit it in front of a child, you, they're not going to gather. You have to teach them how to utilize the technology, how to utilize the tools, and you have to supplement it with other things as mm -hmm. well. So it's just one tool in your Because okay. technically you're kind of moving with the times instead of keeping them. Because right. I remember yeah. when they when they would tell us that, like um, when they used to t we used to take tests and they said we can use the the books and we had to look for the answer. Yeah, yeah before it was open book, no calculators. Then it was, then they allowed calculators. Yes, and no cell phones. And no cell phones. Well, because... earlier you were talking about efficiency, right? right. You want to yeah. be efficient. So, to me, what's the purpose of making you learn how to do a specific citation if every so many years it's going to be changed? If there's already a True. program that does that, learn how to use the tool properly and be able to find the resource to make sure that your citation is correct mm -hmm. so that you can go on with the important stuff, which is the content. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's going to be used in the real that's world. That's exactly what I see. So, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Because it's like, why continue? If we have a system that encompasses everything that we've been learning up until that point, why not just use that and then expand on it and, and kind of... Yeah, so just use know. it. It's the same way like with the evolution of the printing press, right? Before right. that, everything had to be handwritten and, you yeah. know, information was slow. It's <laughs> just you're adding, you know, technology I don't think takes away from education. It just has to be implemented correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. And it also expands and makes it easier. Because it's like you could teach, like, your class something, right? And then be like, okay, here's a YouTube video. Watch this and tell me what you get from this video. You yeah. Know like... You, I could, okay, so it's like supplemental instead yeah. of a, a, a replacement. Well, it's good to yeah, get a perspective. Yeah, as long as it's okay. used, yeah. Okay, okay. See, because like, every time I ask that question, I that's the most complete answer I've gotten. Yeah. That's <laughs> the most complete ass. answer I've gotten. Yeah. And, and like, I, she, I, I would... Have you asked other teachers or you just, she's the first? 
I think she's really the first that's really kind that's of... That's actually giving you the answer. That's giving me the answer. Nobody's so, got the answer. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> uh, and then I could, you know, further the, the question into a hypothetical, which is, like, I don't know if you've ever heard of chat GPT. No. So it's a soon-to-be general artificial intelligence that's available to the public. Okay. Anyone... And it There's has, no subscription-based payment now, yeah, but it not, will yeah, soon. not not yet. not yet. And um, everyone's have uh, every tech qu- company is racing to including Elon Musk to buy shares put, in yes. this um, in this technology, and essentially it is connected to the internet, and it will scour all the entire web uh-huh. available to it, and come up with extremely accurate. So if you say an accurate representation of anything, anything. So if you say, "Can you write me a symphony written by Snoop Dogg in a '90s format?" It will. Okay, I've. I've <laughs> but it can, I've loosely heard of this in right. like passing conversation. Right. I haven't yeah. actually read anything about it's, it. It's it's some next level stuff, and the, have, yes, the things I've seen it capable of doing, like scary. It's pretty scary. Like in terms of how it can write code. If you Mm -hmm. need it to write code for a machine. It can analyze the hardware of the machine and write specific code for it. And then it can error check itself. So if if it writes a code for you, it's like, hey, this code doesn't work. Find the errors. It will find the errors. And it will continuously build upon itself. So it'll be wrong. It'll be 95% correct. Then you ask it to error check itself. Then it'll be 98% correct. And it can exponentially error check itself till it can give you a perfect format. I remember in the beginning when they had first released it, um, it had a safe mode. Um, so in kernel mode, uh, it was limitless. It, it was not bound by the rules that the developer set for it. So if you didn't know about this, you could activate it in kernel mode and it could write viruses. It could write. It could steal information. It's dangerous. It could, yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, if something like that kind of gets out there, you know. So, Microsoft just recently made a $10 billion investment in this. Okay. This is on your computer. So, the Elon Musk, too. Right. Okay. If this is on your computers, you know, it's like Bigsby or Alexa or Siri. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Where this thing has all the answers and it can explain like you can ask it explain quantum to, of physics to me like a fifth grader it will do that okay you can ask it um teach me how to write python you know i don't even know how to write python. you see what i'm saying so it's like I know the concept but i looked at it was like so no. what's your hypothetical <laughs> where it's yeah. like how does that that changes how we learn Mm-hmm. Period. Especially for kids, because some of them might even download like, on their phones or tablets. Period. That mm-hmm. changes how we learn anything. Because it's like what we just spoke on. If we already understand the system, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, why do we need to continue to rehash it? Why don't we just use this that we figured out as a, a base and then build off of that, build our knowledge off of that? So, like, if we've already discovered all this information in the world and we have it in one location... Why don't we just use this tool to further what we want to learn? We expand our frontier. We start a new frontier in discovering things because this is already available information. You guys give me no prep questions. You just throw things at me. I told you. It's cool. I got this. I got this. Every and nothing. Um, Let's go. You got this. So with that, everybody has different, like, personalities, different learning styles, correct? So just because the knowledge is there, just because you have a different way to, like, give it to you does not mean that you'll be engaged um and or focused so like the the role that the educator played in that scenario would then just be more of more of a facilitator rather than one of the like like they would like be setting everything up making sure everybody's on task Mm -hmm. like playing but then also like you have to have like actual tactile and engage at things with one-on-one people otherwise they're gonna get bored it goes back to like every so many years in history like what was it the pastoral poetry mm-hmm. when everything was become an industrial revolution, revolution. all of a sudden writers yeah. all wanted to write about like oh just giving up the city and going and living in the country people always want what they don't have so right. if this becomes like the norm then people are going to be like oh can't we just like pull out the paper and like it's just one of those things yeah. so yeah. i don't think it'll really like 
I think there's pros and cons to everything. I th- right. I'm such a like m- like I don't. There's no like black or white yes or no, no I answer. I feel like it's, it's such just, a gray area. It's just gonna be right. just a restructuring, I right. think, or a different way. Right. Twenty thirty is the goal. Well, that's that's what that's the deadline, not the goal. <laughs> that's <laughs> the deadline. Because all this is happening now. And with everything, there's always going to be the chance of, like, negative repercussions, right? But it just depends on how it's utilized and who utilizes it and for what purpose. Always. And that's the thing. It's like, if someone has this type of technology, how do you distribute that power fairly? It's Mm. not. That's the thing. I have no. That's above me. You I'm just a lonely yeah. lawyer down here. Like, yeah. me. am I, I no just clue. a witness? Am <laughs> I just we're, a we're witnesses? Am I just the end user? It's like when they're talking about you they're going to be vacationing on the moon. That's not for us. I, I have got nothing for you there. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just play board games and read books yeah. and try to be nice to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Digitize <laughs> board. No, that's crazy. Whoa, confiscate whoa, whoa. the AI lords are going to confiscate all physical board games. <laughs> this is reminiscent of the prior era. <laughs> I would be so sad. Eradicate. I mean. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. That'd be crazy, man. I know you. Uh, no, you probably have. Um, the 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 dancing robot, Boston Dynamics. Oh, no. No. They gave it hands now. Don't do that. It has hands now. Yeah, it has hands. I know. I I know. You're not. You you're not inside that sphere. So it's like. I'm just coming at you with this. Like, like, I have no clue. Hey, uh, guys, the, the robot overlords, the singularity. Yeah, I mean, like, in 2020, I had to learn how to like play digital board games because I was quarantined and <laughs> couldn't play with my friends. That's funny. Oh, man. Like, me and my niece FaceTimed each other and each had a copy of the same game played because there wasn't a digital version. And we had to have my husband, like, and my mom hold up card, like, hide cards, and like. And this is all like on FaceTime. Yeah, oh yeah. man! And then That's there's awesome. things like the board game arena and Tabletopia and things like that, where you can play like uh, one of them. It's like more of what you would imagine, like a computerized <laughs> version of Solitaire, but it's actual board games where like it, you know, auto loads the cards and stuff like that. There's pros and cons to that versus the physical <laughs> game. Like okay. it auto sets up, saves time, it auto scores, but then you can also count the other person's score because it's right there and you see it. So, um, but then Tabletopia, Tabletopia, I think it is. One of them actually has like 3D pieces and you can move it around like a little avatar and uh, pretend you're playing on the table. Cool. You can even inload like a pretend beer and pretend you're drinking it and sit around the table. Oh, there is oh, digital cool. versions of board it's games. It's like AR. like. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I do play yeah. that way like, sometimes. Like the Pokemon uh, Go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I will Yeah, and I just way. noticed that they also started doing events for like Yu-Gi-Oh! So people are actually playing card game, uh, the card game Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, just, yeah, that's they, still a thing. been doing it. Yeah, that, but I, I, just, I discovered it. What was it? Something jar. Stop. Oh, Stop man. Stop it. Jeez, man. <laughs> the mo- they banned it. They I had to ban it. I can pull another card out of it. It's this. like I can continuously pull cards as long as I... Pot of greed. There pot we of go. Greed. Pot of greed. Pot I can continuously draw cards. I draw a pot of turn. greed. That means I can grab two more cards. I can grab two more cards from my deck. Oh, I've hey. What's that? I, mean, I know what you get. Another is. pot of I greed. Can I can draw more cards. <laughs> <laughs> what? Get out of here, man. Banned. That's banned. Oh, my God. That's Another crazy. pot of greed. I can draw two more Ended cards. that man's career, bro. <laughs> that was dumb. That was yeah. dumb. I mean... I prefer playing physical board games with yeah. people in real life, but I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong. I mean, but that's the goal, Don't right? get me wrong, though. If it's like Friday morning at 10, 10 a.m. and nobody's there to play with me, I will play the digital version. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. That's I'm right. not going to not play. But, but, that's, but that's essentially the goal, right? Because a lot of people came and really communicate each other like they, like, Yeah, that is, a, that is a thing, So yeah. to bring people together in an event, because you're seeing a lot of young kids, like, yeah, the social twenty-five. Yeah, very different. Yeah. So um, essentially, if if you continue to move forward with these events and just getting people out their comfort zone, behind, uh, away from the screen and uh, talking to actual people, then that's right. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That's an event that you can start. Have you ever thought of what you would name the event, or would it just? Don't worry. Whatever you say here. I is, have no clue. Yeah. I have no clue. Even if you say on here, it's when we post it. It's, Whoever tries to steal it, it's too late. We'll just sue them. It's already copyrighted. <laughs> yeah. It's digitally. Yeah. Here's the proof. Timestamps, no, baby. No Timestamps and NDA. It's February second. <laughs> <laughs> Timestamps. Yeah, baby. exactly. What the heck? So even if you say it out loud, it's you're fine. 
Anyone? No, it literally, it went like this. I was like, I really need to practice my writing and everything's going to the digital age. What should I do? And somebody was like, start a blog. And I was like, doesn't everybody have a blog? And they're like, eh, just do it. And I was like, on what? And they're like, what do you like? And I was like, board games. And so there you go. then you guys, that was like Thanksgiving. And then yeah. you guys saw me at Christmas and it was literally like, so I'm going to start a blog. Yeah. And this is <laughs> and that's the thing too. A blog is, is the at. most difficult thing you can do. Not a lot of people continue to do them because they're very hard. They are time consuming, yeah. yeah. They are. But so are you so you the website uh -huh. um did you build that yourself or I mean you? I used what yes and no. I used WordPress and in like then I watched um YouTube. No. Best I actually ever. um because YouTube there's like <laughs> okay, there was too much information and there's a thousand different ways to do the same thing. Like mm. when I was looking at like how to um, install a subscription button. I got like 20 different modes. Like, <laughs> do you want to install MailChimp? Do you want to do WP Forms? Do you want to do the widget? And I'm like, okay. So I uh, like... Basic to... installation. Want to accept <laughs> Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> subscription yeah. basis, $5 a month. Yeah, so then I went down like a rabbit hole and I had like this, this notebook with pros and cons and like I had like a list like, okay, well this one does this and this one does this and then I was like, wait a minute. So I just went to this uh, website called Udemy I think is how you pronounce it, U-D-E-M-Y, uh -huh. and just looked at their, like, number one class on, like, WordPress, like, all-in-one, and it was, like, <laughs> X amount of hours, and I was like, I'm just going to take this class, yeah. and whatever, you know, this class recommends is the installation technique I'm going to use, and then if it doesn't do something, because he kept saying, oh, well, if you have a certain theme, or oh, if you have a certain this, and it doesn't do it, it's probably because of this anything I've found along the way that's not working for me, then then I YouTube it because I have a specific thing I'm looking right. for mm -hmm. rather than like trying to start from scratch. So I, I started with a, a class that taught me the specifics and then I branch off using YouTube. Mm. Yeah, so um, I'm using WordPress because it's the one of the number one, one of the best sites for, there. and it has so many things out there already pre-done mm -hmm. that you can buy or you can start from scratch or there's, it says so much flexibility. So like, Yes and no. Yeah. Like, I do some of it, and then some of it, like, I'm not reinventing the wheel, guys. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just, you know, like, <laughs> there's yeah. resources already like we're, out there. We're doing, we're doing Streamlabs. We could use yeah. the OBS, which is you way com have more a complex. Whole studio set up, yeah. broadcasting tower. Yeah, so, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, you know, I started with the idea, and then I really just spitballed it with a, like, I spitballed it with you guys, and then I was sitting around playing board games with, like, the people I play board games mm -hmm. most, and we were just, like, you know, joking and talking about ideas, and then from that, it just became what it is Spawned. now. That's all right. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. See, and that's so this is all like in 90 days from like... That's insane. Yeah. Days. It took us a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. well, that's because we... I don't know. Made mistakes, got messy. <laughs> well, you guys also researched and decided yeah, your idea, right? I just was, decided yeah. like... I was planning on researching and waiting. Um, but I think every video I watched, people said like... Oh, I wish instead of research, I'd have just done it because you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna hate what you started out with, where you think you're gonna be, and then where you end up is two different places. Yeah, just do it. Like just yeah, go. Just like, and so I was it. just like, all right. I mean, nobody's gonna look at this anyway, so I don't care. Oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> hey, and then exactly. next thing I know, I'm oh, like, man. <laughs> and you're at where you're at right now yeah. because of it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's yeah. Great. So I mean, just just go for it. You know. That's true. And always have your book. Wait, what's in that purple book? No, the purple book used to be topics. Remember? Oh like, yeah, that was. Yeah, don't even start me on the different notebooks. I have too many notebooks. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Different notebooks. Because in the beginning, we were like, "Oh, let's just write down a whole bunch of topics." We could, and we were just like, "Nah, just." You know what I'm saying? Like wherever the conversation. We got well, yeah, because we we yeah. took we take constructive criticism, but we don't take it negatively. It's, yeah, no, I love constructive criticism. And one of the ones that you know. Um, I got and I was like I was really happy he told me this because like yeah it it took some weight off of me because I was like okay it doesn't have to be this way what are we what are we what are we talking about yeah what it, is this? It, it felt like we were giving news like we were like we were oh, read, because we're, you were trying to like uh, read off, like yeah. very scripted I got yeah you. it felt way too scripted he's like so he said free flow free flow so every time and I think that us, was and that was the best advice yeah, he ever was, gave us. Yeah, my closest, my closest friend. He he told me he's like, bro, just 
free flow. Go I'm not going to lie. Your free flow was like really daunting because I was like, okay, so do you want to talk about like the Dyson drafts? Do you want to talk about board games? What do you want me oh, to we talk about? Everything I was going to like research time. and Everything. prep and you guys were Everything. like, yeah, it's free flow. And it's I was like, flow. oh, okay, well, yeah. sure. But you're ready. You, you <laughs> answered sure. all, almost all the questions. Man, no, this is... This is well, it's kind of like how we talk when we normally just hang yeah, out for sure. and we play just board just, games with each other. Oh, yeah, we were sure. playing, what, what were we playing? Between, what did we play? The castle, the castle thing. Where we oh yeah, between two castles. The, it's one of my yeah. favorite games Wait, ever. Wait, what's it called again? Between two castles. Between, between two, two castles. castles. Where you had to like build a castle, but you couldn't overbuild it. Yeah, and you if couldn't you underbuild did, it because you're building it with a partner part, on your left, right. but then you're also building, building it with a partner on your right. right. And you've so got you're trying to win either way. Yeah, love that game. One of my favorites. That was so cool. It took a little bit, like, to kind of get the the rules of like. The hallways and you can't build above a fountain yeah. and the fountain is the cap right or the tower yeah the tower it's one of those games that no matter how well i explain it nobody ever understands it until they play it and score it and then they're like oh no redo redo yeah. Yeah. i already know what i'm gonna that's do how I that's am awesome too. like i like i love those games. And, and i know every single time i uh, uh go to you or our mutual friends skylar yeah. Oh, okay, Skylar. Dude, oh, you, know mean, drop his name? you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Times we say his name on the Harry Potter guy. Skylar, Skylar, you're He's not a secret on. anymore. You're not. You're famous. No. Exactly. <laughs> you're gonna have After he listens to this. Yeah, that's true. So every time we go to Skylar's place, like I already know I'm gonna have a good day. Like he told us about Dokupon like, like, Kingdom going yeah, on uh, the, the yeah, Switch. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, they're, yes. they're, they're redoing April. Dokupon Kingdom. He's like Jeff. Did you read my text message? I said no. What? Dokupon Kingdom. The endless game. The endless game. The endless. It took us. An entire year, me, Jerry, and Skylar played Dokupon Kingdom. <laughs> it took us a it's year. It's for the next generation. This game will last a decade. <laughs> oh man, it was it was phenomenal though. This um, game will last a decade. And I'm then, super behind. I'm I don't think I'm playing anything on the Switch. I'm playing the Stray on PlayStation right now. Like I know that came out like months and months ago. No, no, but, but how is that? Cause I I've liked it. Um, it got spoiled for me. Like I was anticipating that game for quite a long time, and yeah. then when I sustained the injury where I couldn't read, I also couldn't play games. That was like literally the same time Stray Aww. dropped, and so I couldn't play it. Damn. And then it got spoiled for me because like everybody was talking Top about reviews it. Reviews and all that. And I was that. like, so then I was kind of salty. I wouldn't play it for a while. <laughs> Just jump into the other world. <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean, I've had fun with it. Like, you know, the intro, you're a cute little kitten. I probably spent way too much time, like, just, you know, scratching the tree and you're just being a You're in a world of robots, cat. right? Yeah, so it does get a little, like, weird later because you're in a world with robots and, like, humans are gone. And, like, you start out as a cat, like, in a forest or you're somewhere. You're somewhere, like, uh-huh. with your little cat family and you're just being cats, just walking around. And then, like you fall into like an old like sewer that's like covered and you have to crawl through it and you come out and you're in the city that's been walled off and taken over by like robots and there's no more humans and like there's trash everywhere but then there's these signs like like follow me like trying to help the cat out and then you find a robot little like ai thing that like pairs with you and you wear it on your back and it like is helping you yeah yeah can i just add a disclaimer yes that cat Still has more rights than every citizen of that robot city. He's not lying. Yep. Because what are they doing throughout the whole game? Serving him or it. Yeah. So I haven't gotten super far. I think I'm. How long? How do you know? Estimate what the g- game play time is. I think, and do not quote me on this because I could be misremembering, Sorry. but I think it said like seven to ten hours. But um. I could be wrong on that, so double check Seven to me. Ten hours. I think okay. double check me because I'm also playing Unravel with my husband, so like okay. I could be misremembering and mixing the two up. Mm, unravel. That's the five hours. Five See, hours. I was really? right. See, it was it was like seven. It was something. So they're saying five. I feel like five would be a speed run, though. Yeah, that's a speed run. That's, but if you like yeah, detail scratch, I think it's seven to ten. Yeah. Like yeah, because that's what I'm doing. I'm doing everything. Like I'm a cat. I've already yeah. got my head stuck in a bag three times. Like it's nine and I'm, a half if you do a hundred percent. That's what I'm five doing. Because I want to do all the kitty cat things. Yeah, that's Every what carpet I, I find, I claw it. Yeah. That's why for me, like I rarely <clears throat> buy as many games because when I play a game, like I'm unlocking everything. I'm looking in every nook and cranny. Even when I watch him play through games, I'm like, Jeff, check in that corner. Yeah. Jeff, lift this Yeah, see, that's... Like that. I, I like video games. I don't play them as nearly as much, though. And I'm much more of, like, a storyline game. <laughs> I, I really like the, like, 
interactive book games or like the little dating games and then mm-hmm. I really like party games I'm not really like a super she's talking about Telltales <laughs> Life is Strange I haven't played that one but I like it I don't play a whole lot of oh, video games. Love it. Oh, I'm love currently it. playing Unravel, Stray, you are gonna and Celeste. Love, you are going to love you'll Life love is Strange. It. Life it's, is it's, Strange, too. I haven't played the third yeah, one. You're not doing a whole lot, but it's story-driven. It's story-driven. It's story-driven. See, yeah, I like stories. Was it Heavy Rain? Um, Until Dawn. Until Heavy Dawn, Rain. Heavy Rain. Um, you have Tell- I have uh, Wolf Among Us, Telltale. Yeah. Gotcha. The Walking Dead. See, games that take, like... 50 hours to beat I've just I just I can't I just don't there's not enough time I just I can't if deal, you guys. like story you should play Dark Souls <laughs> <laughs> bro stop playing she'll never be finished okay? no. stop no. playing no and I don't play them as much and I'm not like the best video gamer in the world so you'll definitely love Telltale's uh, yeah, yeah. The, like uh, the, the Wolf Among Us um, the, great story Great story, story games. Great story. Yeah, story. Yep. Life is strange. Uh, they should be cheap. Life is strange one and two. So the first one. They'll deal- sell bundles. Yeah. So the for first like six ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. The first girl is she can rewind time, so That's cool. she uses that to save people. And then the second one, um, uh, it's a Mexican family. Dad gets shot. The two kids end up running, trying to make it to the border of Mexico because the cops didn't care about. And it talks about uh, so racism, all that stuff. Like, oh yeah, it's I like mean, deep. Wow. And then the third one, the the girl, her powers, she can see color. Like you're. Oh, that's cool. If you're if you're pissed, color. you turn red. Your aura turns red. If you're happy, your aura I turns. Agree. <laughs> you, you, Jesus. I told you, he's got a new mommy. He's gonna come. Yeah. <laughs> so Timmy with you? Just I know it's okay, Bruce. You can oh, stay yes. at my house. Oh, yeah. You, you'll get pop cups, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I bring so. this dog home. My cat's gonna beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> my cat would be He'll so mad. Yeah. 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 So. But no, no, those those I recommend you try them out. You have a PS4 or PS5? No, PS5. Uh, disc or discless? Disc. Okay, so then she can do Wait, when did you get yours? When did I get my PS5? Yeah. Christmas. Christmas? Yeah. I Remember that's when PlayStation was. I legit had my husband was. buy me a PS5 uh, for Christmas because Hogwarts Legacy is coming out. Yeah. Everyone, like, I done. keep seeing so many memes yeah. on but, that. Yeah, evil memes. If you, evil memes. No. The moment if, I get into it, I'm just... They're Just, like, if you play Hogwarts Legacy, you're transphobic. <laughs> what? That's yeah. crazy. That's I was like, crazy. where did that come from? No, like, not even. Like, no, that's the one. That, that was one of the. All like, I keep seeing is memes of Voldemort. Just like, what was it? What was he kept saying? What did he kept saying? He kept was, saying something. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna need the game to play it four times. Everyone's I, gonna be I Slytherin. No, 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 percent Slytherin. You will be the lone Hufflepuff. Getting marked every, every day. day. I am a Ravenclaw, and I will play as my real self the first time. I'll make a little avatar, but then my second you time, I, yeah, my second time, I'm gonna make an avatar of one of my friends who's a Slytherin oh and play as her. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna play Everybody wants to be evil now. <laughs> evil. Oh the early 2000s, everybody wants to be Harry Potter. No, the stat team. rates, yep. like PK ratio, 99%. 99%. We're killing everybody. But then I also want to play Hufflepuff and I also want to play Gryffindor. I want to play like all my best lives. Oh, so you're going to... I'm going to have a character for all okay. of them. Because you can continuously right, do it. Right, yeah. yeah. I want to see the difference different angles, how it diverges. Yeah. Okay. And then if they do online, that's it. It's and just going to be like Grand Theft Auto. That's kind of like how we did with uh, Infamous Second Son. Where you could literally like... It was a choice-based game depending oh, on... I love choice-based yeah. games. Yeah. And it, then you're it, definitely going to look at the And it determined series. like the outcome... Not just for the end of the game, but for how the story progressed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, oh, I guess like uh, until dawn. I guess. Yeah, yeah. until dawn. Yeah, until everybody survived. Can you play PS4 games? I mean, I have a PS4. It's backwards compatible. It oh, is, backwards. is. Is it back? I don't know. I mean, I have a PS4 you want, as if well. If you want to just... borrow it, I can let you borrow it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, those are cool games. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. What's up, Bruce? Hey, kid. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I prefer tabletop games, and I like the connections. Yeah. I do play video games. I mean, who doesn't? I just you know. And I prefer books, but I also, you know, like movies, so. Word. Escapes. You know. She likes escapes. analog. I feel it. I feel it. It's, it's hey, we're, we're going to an era where motherfuckers don't know what a page is. Yeah, that's true. I They're think gonna... I, I played video games a lot as a child. I just got out of them when, like, Halo and first-person shooters got really big, because that's just not my thing. I don't like Halo. And I was either. not a big fan of Grand Theft Auto. We're I played the first one, but I just, I, you know, like, the, I, it's just not my thing. I'm he just could not, never get into it. I'm not interested. I played, yeah, anything. I'm just not interested. So then there was, like, a whole probably 
seven, eight years where I barely played yeah, anything. Like it's shooting. just well, it wasn't my was thing. The only game I could play. So I just recent maybe in the past five years got back into playing. Okay. Um, well, yeah, because they really started focusing on like indie developers and yeah. stuff like that. Because yeah, like small small time the the, the bigger guys they're all milked out. They're dry. You know well, and that's it's a like, PlayStation's biggest biggest um, seller seller Market the indie point. games like every year when they do their showcase well they do it like three times a year right mm -hmm. they do it spring uh, the, summer the and then state fall. of play state of play so every year they do it they show all these small time developers and all their games are amazing so like stray was one of a small time developer yeah too. so it's... but it'd be nice if they did that with board games you know like had a, a actual you could do a digital event or the like you said the live event mm -hmm. where Oh, we're talking give, about we're gonna up, give you ideas. upcoming board games and stuff like that. Don't worry, that's mom. I was yeah. gonna say, I know there's like, um, oh, okay, I know there's like podcasts and stuff that talk about like top ten, and I know there's people that talk about up and coming. Is there? There's got to be board game awards, right? I'm sure there is. Are there really? If there are, then I didn't. I didn't know. That. It's in the trenches. I've never heard of a board game award. I mean, I've seen games say, like, Game of the Year, so it has yeah, to be a thing. Game. But I feel like it's like the Oscars, though. It's yeah, like... but I don't, yeah, I think it's more like a, like a nomination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, is, is that where we're going, though? Like, let, let's rewind 30 years ago with video games. If you, you'd have told somebody 30 years ago that video games was going to be, like, the Oscars. Like, yeah, you know, there's been different. a resurgence of board games, like, because yeah. there's developers and, you know, That's artists true. and, you know, writers and That's all true. these different, you know, parts. Yeah. You know, I feel like we need to look this up. I feel like I should know this as a board game blogger, whether there's board game. Yeah, you could be the online presence for that. Like, cause... It's like, he's, like we said, yeah. especially here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I was telling my brother, we're in um, Southwest Florida, and there's no other like major podcasts here. Really? Like Miami, Orlando, um, and all the other stuff. But I know there's two other, two, three, three other individuals that are pretty big in the the board game. Um, scene here mm -hmm. one's more present on tiktok mm -hmm. and one does more with like dice tower and has a podcast mm -hmm. and then the other one does D, &D stuff That's far. so i know that there is three presents so i'm not the the only one there's but i think i'm the only one that does blogging it, that's the thing yeah it, it's a different niche it's a different niche so, so and it's, it's you'll find your path like yeah. it's it, especially with you running this like you know you can be uh, like an amoeba and how you move and what mm -hmm. you, what you're going for. See what you can improve on. Right. See what, what other what people saying? are doing. It'll, it most likely it'll evolve as you know media evolves, as you know board games evolve, companies evolve. You know. Yeah, I would definitely love to see more down here. I know that like I know we've started having different cons down here that are smaller. <laughs> like I know there's like Steampunk Con and there is um, the Paranormal one. There's a few different ones that <laughs> are down here now mm -hmm. um, that have been doing a couple years now. But I know, like, the big ones are more like Tampa and Miami Tampa, and Orlando. Yeah, like, right. I would love to see, like, 10 years from now, us have, like, you know, board game conventions and all the different, you know, yeah. I mean, you things. can make that yeah. come into fruition. You, yeah. You yeah. could, you could. Like I said, in just less than 90 days, you already got an event happening for somebody, but they still connect with you through social media right. to have that conversation, and now it's set right. up and it's happening. And so, that's just a microscope of, of the what big, you can bring to these Events. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in this area who are board game enthusiasts yep. and tabletop enthusiasts mm -hmm. and who, like, love the fandom and mm -hmm. if we can just find a way to bring us all together. Because sure. there's so many people who want to do things, but For it's sure. just taking that person to be like, all right, well, let's let's get let's together. Let's it. go. Let's That's do it. Facts. You're the catalyst. catalyst. You're the catalyst. Ah! Good job. You're the catalyst. <laughs> JB, like I said, we'll support you in whatever you want to do. Um, and if we can make it happen, it'd be nice too. Like you said, to film the event or mm -hmm. anything that you want to do, just to get your name out there, it would be an amazing thing to do. Yeah, so. I just want to, you know, play more games, get more people together. Hey, and I know there's great. Um, there's a group. Uh, I don't. Do you guys know Joey Evans? No, we don't. I know he does an event at um, Gateway, but he only does it once every three months. Uh, where they do a whole weekend like a gamers retreat. He oh, started wow. that. I think a year and a half ago, and he does a whole weekend, and it's completely free, where he's just like, hey, everybody show up, let's play some games. Mm -hmm. um, and he has a space, it's at his church, I think is, I think it's oh, his cool church. Oh, cool Yeah, so he does that. Um, is it like a shut-in, kind of? 
Kind of. A weekend show. Kind, kind of, except for we don't spend the night because we're adults and have houses and we go home. <laughs> and we like we showers. Have responsibilities. Showers, yeah. Uh, <laughs> responsibilities. Yeah, they order a bunch of pizza and like uh, some of the church youth group like sells like a little cantina where they have like bars and See, um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, chips and stuff. And it's, it's really cool. He does it once every three months. Um, which is really cool, but I would yeah. love to start having more of like a regular weekly right. game night. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, maybe we can have him issue. on the show yeah. with you next time, and you guys we can have that conversation about him just telling people about it, and then just creating the events, just networking. Because sure. yeah. you're very good at networking. Thank you. So, Thank you. but it'd be amazing if you would, uh, if that would be possible. Word. And I have one random question for you. Okay. It has nothing to do with board games or books. I love random questions. But education, though. Okay. As a teacher. Okay. Um, where do you feel the education system is going now? Like, do you like it? Do you, do you, do you like the direction that they're heading? Do you feel like the kids are learning more or less? Like, do you think that they can improve on certain things? What is missing? What is missing? Is Yeah, that's what I'm trying to ask you. Oh. What do you think is missing or is not? And then what can they improve on? Because everybody goes and consumes social media. Mm-hmm. And they hear what people are complaining about, but is, that's not the bigger picture. Right. You personally, because you're coming from inside there. Right. You're in there. You're in it. So you're is not. There's people speaking for you. I think that it sometimes gets too like focused on like the scripted curriculum, mm-hmm. and sometimes it needs to be more like student led. Um, like what do they want to learn because you can't force somebody to be interested in something like yeah I might need to teach you like how to understand tone or maybe how to understand like bias versus non-bias but I think the specific article that I utilize shouldn't matter so I think it should be more like student choices on like the what exactly it is Mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah yeah yeah. because I think sometimes like when people feel like they're forced to learn the specific thing okay so is that kind of like a restructuring of how kids move through school like in a vo- like in a vocational sense where they can kind of choose which what path they want yeah to i kind of wish like i know it sounds hard because like they are children so they do need structure <laughs> and i know in high school you start being able to choose some of your classes but it's a very limited scope right. and it's not till college that you really get to like right. you know pursue different avenues i almost wish like yeah, at the middle school age, they do have, like, you know, different classes, yeah. but they don't really have a lot of say in that. And it, in like, that. I wish there was more, like, Option. options mm-hmm. of paths. I know there's specific skill sets, you know, you need no matter what, mm-hmm. but I just wish they had a little bit more uh, choice, like right. divergency or something. Okay. 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 Right, yeah, because I feel like now, you, especially once you go that route, kids can really gravitate towards their strengths and their interests yeah and yeah they, and they applied those interests you know yeah and it's kind of like uh things take so long like laws take so long to get yeah. passed and then the curriculum takes so long mm-hmm. to get developed and mm-hmm. then when it comes out it's used for so many years and you just said it yourself with technology so fast it's like by the time this comes out it's like we're on to the next thing they're already on to the next thing so mm-hmm. it's hard to keep up there just needs to be a a faster way to update the curriculum i guess I got you. if that makes sense right. yeah um, so, or have more choices so the kids have more say so in what they're mm-hmm. learning. Because I know the last textbook we got had some really interesting, engaging stuff, but then, you know, two years later, it was completely it was irrelevant. Irrelevant because, yeah. like, you know, the okay. technology they were discussing in that book had so evolved since then. So, which is why they don't do books anymore. They do tablets now because it's yeah, easier to update. Yeah, exactly. That. It's easier to update. So, I guess it just. I guess it's a transitional phase. It's got to get to where it can keep up with the... Yeah. Right. See, I just... I'm glad you understand. You got to ask somebody that knows. I'm glad you understand that. That's that's great because, you know, it's tough, especially going through a period of change. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's tough. But, hey, man. um, So, we have one final question for you. Oh, my goodness, a question. Okay. Would you like to ask the question? No, you go ahead. You do it this time. Is there any piece of advice? Like, something that keeps you going, motivated, that you would like to share with the world? That someone could resonate with you? 
Don't worry, we ask everybody this. <laughs> like a generic piece of advice just that keeps Anything. me going it day could be, to day? It, it could be generic. It could be personal. It, could it be, might not resonate with us or right. the next person, but it, it might gener- resonate with like, somebody that but, understands where you're yeah. coming from. But if there's something, like if, so, uh, if, if someone asks you, hey, if you could give me one piece of advice, what would you give me? To always choose happy. Like there's always going to be you know, good days and bad days, and there's always going to be so many things that bog you down. And I'm not saying that you have to be, like, forced positive. It's completely okay that when something sad happens to cry and acknowledge your sadness. But always choose to, like, you know, look at things on the bright side and try to, like, find that one grain. No matter how bad a day is, there's Mm -hmm. always, you know, a silver lining. So always try to find that moment of happiness to hang on to. Word. Sensational. I feel it. (laughs) It was sensational. Thank you, thank you. Kay, thank, you, thank you for coming on. Would you like to plug in your socials and tell everybody about the upcoming for event? For sure, let them know. Sure. And where to find you? Yeah, so, <laughs> do I just tell you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. and then we'll, when we post the video, okay. yeah, we're going to put your socials on the back. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. I'd love to. Okay, so, you know, DysonDrafts.com. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's my blog with the board games. All right, awesome stuff. Okay, um, you can find me on Facebook. Cadence Stone. It's spelled with a K. Okay. Cadence Stone with a K. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, you can also find me on Instagram at Cadence Knows Books. Okay. Word. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, y'all. Y'all heard that? Oh, and the event. Oh. When is the oh, event? Oh, the event the is event. Um, Retro Arcade. It is tomorrow. What is that? February 4th? Fe- third? Fourth? Third. It's tomorrow. Third. third. February 3rd at 6 p.m. Retro Arcade. On Fowler, Fowler Street. <clears throat> All right. Awesome. All right, brother. Well, Cadence. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having we me. We are definitely going to have you on next time. And if you want to invite a guest with you, you can. Okay. Um, but, uh, guys, this was a very amazing conversation. We learned a lot, educational-wise and game-wise. Thank you, for got- thank you guys for having us at the tabletop. If you want to see... <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I distracting you, sir? No, I'm no. sorry. <laughs> 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 <I'm the other laughs> You're looking at the camera. I'm just joking. Thank you guys for joining us at the Tabletop. If you want to listen to our episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. And if you want to take a look at our ugly mugs on well, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, we are on uh, YouTube, One Word, Tabletop Topics. We also have our Triple T's Clips channel and our uh, TikTok channel. So if you want to take a look at our clips, Click on the link. It will send you to the full episodes. And we also have timestamps so you can jump directly to what you want to listen to or laugh at. Um, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And if you have any any suggestions on anything that you want to talk about or even bring up, uh, we can have that conversation on there. But, guys, thank you. Would the mouse die? Thank you for joining us at the tabletop. You have a good night.